Well, hey, friend, it's Rhonda. Welcome back. We have got some good conversation we're going to have today. But if you are watching on YouTube, you probably notice that I am sitting in a hotel room. Yes, I am. At the time of this recording, I'm sitting in a hotel room in Nashville, a hotel, a little bit of a cute kind of a, a quaint hotel called the Graduate Hotel. And I think from what I understand, it's kind of modeled after like Dolly Parton and all of the all the Nashville girl favorites. So it's very pink and very, it's very cute, very charming, but very eclectic and sassy and a little bit old, you know, older world kind of school, kind of uh, decor, I mean. So it's a fun hotel. I haven't had a chance to go explore too much yet, but I'm going to do that very, very soon. But I want to get this podcast done for you because it's on a topic that I think we all could do a better job at and one that's going to give us better insight about what's really happening from the customer or our patient's uh, side of the fence. In other words, how are they interacting with us? And that is how the best way to find out is not through your objective lens, because objectively, you're going to look at your systems and the way that your patients interact with your office and call your office or make appointments or whatever, however they're interacting, reordering supplements or, you know, asking questions or making referrals. All those are ways that your patients are interacting with you, even on your website or through your Google My Business listing. But how well is all of that working? What would they say about their experience working with you? I'm afraid that there, if you really got quiet and you got honest, you'd probably find that there are some holes in your bucket as it has to do with the way that you're delivering a great customer experience. And so when I say customer, I'm talking about your patients because really they're your customer. They're the consumer and we are the provider. So we want them to have a really good experience. So one of the ways that you can do this is by doing what I like to call a secret shop or sometimes known as a mystery shop. Now I wrote a blog post about this and you can find it. I'll link it in the show notes but you can read more about it here, but the podcast is going to be give you, I'm going to give you my really down and dirty practical tips for how to do this. So why would you, first of all, let's just do why, why in the world would you ever want to do a secret shop? Because, well, probably the biggest thing is what if someone like learns something, you would, if you find something out that you don't like, and, and someone maybe has something to say, your secret shopper has something to say about you that might be a little bit less than friendly, meaning that you get a little bit of feedback that you don't want to hear. Well, listen, if we're going to grow and we want to have better practices and serve our people better and serve more people and get more referrals, which is always what we want, then how we go about doing that is to continue to refine, get better, get good feedback and make the changes that we need to make. So market researchers, big corporations, they secret shop themselves all the time. Don't even think for a minute that like the big retail chains, they hire companies to come in and secret shop. And the whole point of a secret shop is that it's a secret. Nobody knows. So if you are a solo practitioner, you're probably thinking, how in the world am I going to secret shop myself? Well, there's a way I'm going to tell you how. And if you have staff, then it's pretty easy to secret shop how your process works. How are those potential customers or patients interacting with your staff? How easy is it for them to schedule? What kind of feedback would they have, et cetera? So we're basically going to find someone that's a stranger to our offices, someone that's a stranger, and we're going to put the stranger, let them go through the mill and be a secret shopper. And they're going to give you feedback. And I'm going to, I'm going to just kind of outline all this out for you so that you know exactly what to do. So number one, a secret shopper is that it's a secret. As I said, they are like your undercover sleuth. They're a detective, but no one can know. Now, if you are a solo practitioner, which many of you are probably listening, thinking, oh my gosh, that's me. It's just me. I have a small clinic. I just run it myself. Here's how you do this. And I'll get to all y'all that have staff here in a second. But if you're working by yourself, here's how you do this. The first thing you're going to want to do is find a trusted friend or a colleague. Better to have a colleague, maybe your old college buddy, or maybe, you know, a friend, but you're going to ask someone that you trust to find a secret shopper person for you. Someone that you don't know. 
That's got to be the criteria. It can't be someone that you know, because they're not going to give you honest, good feedback. It has to be somebody that you don't know. They have no emotional connection to what you do. They've never seen you before. And they're basically being hired to do a job. Okay. And we'll talk about that in a minute about the hiring part. So what you're going to do is you're going to ask a friend or a colleague, listen, I need somebody to secret shop me. And don't ask your colleague to do it either because your colleague, your friend isn't going to be honest with you. Like friends, it's got to be like that kind of friend. But generally speaking, someone who knows you isn't going to give you the hard, tough love kind of feedback. And really that's what you want. You want to know like what in the world is not working. And your friend might not want to tell you all the way what's going on. So find someone that you don't know or have someone help you. If you have staff, it's a little easier. You can just ask a friend of yours, someone that you know that has never been in your office before, or you could find someone that's a friend of a friend that you really don't know. And you could secret shop that way. Either way, it just has to be someone that, that you don't know. Or if you have a staff that your staff doesn't know, if you want to secret shop your staff and you're kind of your whole process, which is the whole point. So number one, you want to find a secret person. It has to be a stranger to your office. They need a fresh set of eyes. We don't want someone who has really any, they could know what you do, but we don't want them to know about how the process works. The other thing that's a good criteria for a sleuth is the person has to be willing to give really honest feedback, not mean, not critical, not condescending, but just very honest feedback to say, Hey, listen, this is what happened when I blank. And so I'm going to go through what, what we're going to secret shop you about. Right. So hang on, but you want someone that's going to be, give you the honest feedback. Even if it's painful, we want to know, we want to know what's broken. And then lastly, in this first kind of part, you have to know that this person is doing some work for you. So you want to offer to pay them. You might want to offer to pay them $150 to secret shop you just for the process of doing it, pay them hundred dollars, $150, whatever feels like fair to you. Now, they're going to go through the entire process, meaning they're going to pay for an appointment. They may even, if it's a stranger to you, they may come in, fill out the paperwork and come in and be a patient and they could secret shop you doc, you, you could get shopped. And that would be really good too. Cause it gives you feedback about maybe your interaction skill or communication, your ability to communicate, or did you leave the patient feeling confused, et cetera. You could probably get some good feedback about that as well. So you want to find somebody that you're going to pay to do the work and then any money that they pay. In other words, did they actually check out for the appointment and pay your new patient appointment fee and they paid for the supplements? You want to let them know clearly you're going to reimburse them for all of that. So that doesn't have to be out of their pocket. You are willing to pay and have them pay and then you reimburse them and then pay them for the service that they do. I hope I didn't make that too confusing, but I think you get it. So now. Once you have your sleuther, your secret shopper, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to give them a list of questions, things that you think you might want to know. Now, how are you going to come up with those questions? Well, I'm going to give you quite a few to think about, but here's a tip. If you have a suspicion that something's not working right, let's say that your Google My Business is optimized and you're feeling really good about that. And you know that you have people that call all the time, but no one seems to be scheduling an appointment. So what's happening? Why are they dropping off? Why are you not, why is the phone not ringing? Or why are they not following through? Or maybe you get them to come in once, but then they ghost you after that. Something's broken right there. So you want to kind of take a 5,000 foot view of your business, your clinic, your practice, and say, where do I think that my customer service, my customer experience, the process by which they interact with my office, where might it be broken? Or said better, where would the places be that I know I can improve? Be better, no shame in that, right? Where are the places that I think I really could use some improvement? Those are the types of questions you're gonna wanna give to your secret shopper. So I'm gonna give you a list of a bunch of them and you just pick and choose. And if you're somewhere where you can take some notes and jot these things down, great. First of all, how were they greeted when they first called your office? Just that's really simple. Who answered the phone? Did they have to leave a message or did someone answer right away? 
You might want to know how that phone was answered or how long it took for someone to get back to them. Now, that's a big one in my office. I like for people to be responded to quickly, even if we can't answer their question right away, right within the same day, unless it comes in late in the day, but definitely within 24 hours, everybody gets a response. Even if that response is, hey, don't have the answer for you yet, but we're working on it. We'll get back to you as quick as we can. But so you want to see what is your rule? Like how long did they have to wait before they hear back from you or someone in your office? Was the person that they interacted with knowledgeable or they smacking their gum while they were talking on the phone or did they seem distracted or were they using a lot of slang? Was there a lot of, um, well, you knows that kind of thing on the phone. So you want that sort of feedback. How does that how does the person that's interacting, how did they do? You want to know if they have, how long they had to wait for their first appointment. Like, well, did you have to wait for three months to get in or were they able to get in right away? And then what was the follow-up like, like follow-up after they contacted your office? And maybe you don't want to do that. I would recommend that you do, but maybe you don't want to. What was the follow-up like? What was the follow-up like after your appointment? Did they get a supplement sheet? Did they get instructions? Do they know when their follow-up appointment is? Did you provide any details? Was it easy for them to know what was expected of them or what the next steps are? So that follow-up, I will say for most of the doctors that I coach with, the follow-up is usually the part that's not so great. And so that's more than likely going to be a place where you're going to want some feedback. Like what was the secret shoppers experience? And then what was the check-in process? Like, what was the checkout process? Like, was it easy? Was it confusing? Did they feel overwhelmed at the number of supplements or, you know, all the instructions and were they given too many papers, too many handouts, too many instructions, because, you know, we're all guilty of wanting to teach and teach a lot. We often over teach sometimes less is more in this case, but what was their experience? You know, how was it too much, too little? What was that check-in process and that checkout process? And if you have someone that's secret shopping you, that's new to you as the practitioner, How long did they have to wait to see you? And then what was their process or experience like when working with you? I think that in its, in and of itself is invaluable. Did they feel like they had your full attention or were you, you know, on a virtual call, checking your emails or jotting down notes and not paying attention or something. So you may want to get that information. And I really think if you're going to hire a secret shopper to kind of give you this sort of insight and you're, you friend, listen, as a business owner, you're not going to be able to give this kind of information to yourself because you're too close to it. You really do need someone else on the outside that can do it for you. Now, inside our community, my community, we have an off Facebook community and there's a bunch of clinicians in there. And I would bet those clinicians would be willing to secret shop one another because because secret shop, at least for the staff piece, because they know what it, what it feels like and what it should look like as far as a customer experience. So you want to find someone who is new to you or new to your staff, but someone who kind of can get a grasp of what it should be like, and then they can help you guide you with some constructive feedback. So you want to know, uh, how much did they love the overall experience? Like, Was it a positive experience? Would they tell someone else about it? Or was it just kind of, no, you know, it was okay. Like, no, it was okay. We'll see. We'll see if the guy can do what he says he's going to do. Was it that kind of experience? What could have been better? So think about your whole process from the point that your potential patient or client picks up the phone or is looking at your website and fills out a form, like who's watching those form fills. If you have a contact us form on your website, which most people do, who's watching that box? Where do those forms go? Do they just get lost in your inbox or do they go to a dedicated person? Or do you have a virtual assistant that helps you with that? So you want to know what's happening. Where is it breaking down? And your secret shopper may try and interact with you, your office several ways. Like through the form on your website and buy a phone call or text message if you offer that, whatever it might be. So once you're all done and you've kind of looked at your, your business from a 5,000 foot, 10,000 foot perspective, and you said, gosh, I really think that I am kind of not doing a great job at this, at this part of 
how I'm interacting with my customer, my potential patient. So you you get your list of questions. These are kind of the things I want to know. Then you're going to bring that person after they've secret shopped you, you're going to obviously pay them back for any money that they spent and they gave you for supplements. You're going to take the supplements back, whatever you got to do to make that right. We don't want them holding the bag. And so you're going to get that feedback. You're going to sit down and get the details and you just want to keep an open mind. They're coming back to you with information for you, my friend, that is gold. It is golden, the information. And maybe they don't have any issue with your front desk staff, but they didn't really feel like you were given the love or vice versa. So sometimes the information that we get is kind of, you know, you got it. You just got to remember, this is just information. It's not an attack on you. It's not an attack on your business or what you've built. It's a way for you to say, oh, hey, this is a spot where I actually can do better. I'm going to make this area bet even better, right? Don't go beating yourself up. So you want them to look for things when they come in, things like, what is the condition of your waiting room? And does it smell? What is the quality of the furniture? Is there holes? Is there a leaky roof? Are the windows dirty? Are there fingerprints or dust? What does the waiting area look like? What does the desk look like? Is there boxes and files and papers and crap everywhere? Like you want them to do some visual inspection as well, if you have a brick and mortar. And then ask them at the end when you're talking to them and they're giving you the feedback. So overall, What kind of experience would you give me? What rating would you give me? One out of 10, what would you say? And let them give you that feedback and that perspective because I tell you, this information can be invaluable. I've done this probably eight or 10 different times throughout the course of my, you know, having a practice. It was many, many, many years in before I ever did it. And I do it every couple of years. I think it's probably been two years, two, maybe three years since I've done it. And it's time for me to do it. So I'm going to hold myself accountable. I'm going to tell you all, I'm going to secret shop. And so for my staff that's listening and producing this podcast, don't listen, but I I will have a secret shop within the next three months, someone who walks through the whole process with us and then can give me that feedback because I can't see it. I'm just too close, but this is one way that you can really improve the way that you are providing an exceptional customer experience, exceptional patient experience. And the patients that have great experience with you, they're the ones that are going to stay. They stay, they stay, they refer and they stay and they're happy to pay because they get results, but they get treated like there's someone important and someone special. And that's really what you want. So you give your secret spy permission to tell you absolutely everything and just keep a very open mind. That's the most important part. Don't get all offended. Just keep an open mind because it's just information. So to wrap up, secret shopping is a very, very powerful way that you can improve your practice and you can improve your patient experience. But you, it takes a little work in the beginning, but it is money and time well spent because you will get information that you will not even believe how valuable that information is. So there you go, my friend, go find a secret shopper and let somebody spy on you. This is the best kind of spying that you'll ever do.